G'day everyone, welcome to Macbeth, Act 5, Scene 5. Now we've just had a little visit with Malcolm and his soldiers, and now we're back to Macbeth. And Macbeth opens the scene, he says, Hang out our banners on the outward walls, the cry is still they come, our castle strength will laugh a siege to scorn. So he's confident that he's going to win, he's ready for war, um, then Seton is there, his servant, he's saying, oh, what's that noise? It's the cry of women, my good lord. And then Macbeth starts reflecting. I have almost forgot the taste of fears. The time has been my senses would have cooled to hear a night shriek and my fell of hair would add a dismal treatise, rouse and stir as life were in. I have sept, supped full with horrors, dinous familiar to my slaughterous thoughts. He cannot once start me. So here he's talking about how He's almost forgotten what fear feels like uh, because he has supped full with horrors, because he has been so deeply engaged with real life horrors that he's no longer so shocked by the horrible murderous thoughts and they can't startle him. Start me in this case is startle. Then there's a cry, and we know that because Shakespeare writes, wherefore was that cry? What was that cry? And Seton reports, the Queen, my Lord, is dead. So Lady Macbeth is dead, and the implication is that she has committed suicide. Macbeth's soliloquy comes in here, and this is probably the most well-known soliloquy from Macbeth. His response is, she should have died hereafter. There would have been a time for such a word. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage, and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. So he's really come to this conclusion that life is meaningless. We just work and worry and fret. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage. But actually it doesn't mean anything. We go through this and then we die at the end. So this soliloquy is really important because this is Macbeth's crisis moment. He has come to this realisation that life is meaningless. And it's quite a, a dark realisation. And it's one that leads him ultimately to his death and destruction. Now, here comes the messenger. And the messenger says, I looked toward Burnham and anon me thought the wood began to move. And Macbeth instantly starts shouting, liar and slave, he calls him. Now, why is Macbeth so triggered by this? Well, because what was the prophecy? That Macbeth doesn't have to worry until Burnham Wood comes to Dunsinane. And here is Burnham Wood looking like it's moving toward Dunsinane. And of course, what is it? It is Malcolm's army on the march using branches from Burnham Wood to conceal his numbers. And so now Macbeth realises he's in trouble. And... Too late, I would put. He realises that the witches have told him false truths. He says, I pull in resolution and begin to doubt the equivocation of the thing that lies like truth. Fear not till Burnham Wood do come to Dunsinane. And now Wood comes toward Dunsinane. And so finally, Macbeth has woken up to the witches that they lie like truth. And he's finally doubting now the claims that the fiend or evil or devil 
is has been making to Macbeth. So finally he realizes. But of course it's all far too late and he now is on his road to fighting and dying. And at the very end he says, at last we'll die with harness on our at least we'll die with harness on our back. And so the warrior spirit in him comes out. He's going to die fighting. Alright, that's it for Act 5, Scene 5. And characteristically of this act, we're cutting backwards and forwards between Macbeth and Malcolm and getting nice contrast between the, the chaotic death of Macbeth and the, the more organised attack of Malcolm and Macduff. Alright, that's it. Thank you.